about this. Dan Moulton, Shakira Chambers, Kathleen Monk, and Laura Stone. Laura's here in Ottawa, but you're normally covering this beat. Uh, unpack for us these comments and the reaction to them. Well, I would say my first reaction was, oh, I feel like he said this before. This isn't really new to me that Doug Ford would say this. I think maybe I've just gotten accustomed to sort of his off-the-cuff remarks that he makes in, in these press conferences. But I think when you really drill down as to what he's responding to, he's not being asked about a homelessness problem or or the encampments that we're seeing propping up in cities. He's talking. He's being asked about a very legitimate issue about affordable housing, mm. which you know we've seen the rise in food banks. As and Kathleen and I were talking backstage, you know, people with with good jobs, good solid jobs, can't afford to pay rent or, or could never dream of owning a home, particularly in the greater Toronto area. So I do think he kind of um, went off the rails there in terms of what he was actually responding to. Will this have a significant impact on, on Doug Ford's electoral prospects or something? I don't think so, because, because I think, you know, the sentiment that he's pinning down of, you know, if you can work, you should go get a job. I think most people agree with that sentiment. But I think what he was responding to and kind of um, going a bit uh, off topic there, I, I don't think really helps his cause. I think in general terms, Kathleen, people agree with that sentiment. As applied to people who are in homeless encampments, for example, and gosh knows what they're struggling with, or people, as Laura points out, who are waiting for affordable housing, who yeah. likely work at least one job. Like, uh -huh. they're not unemployed. They're working two jobs at times. Like, it just seemed bizarre. And I understand everyone's like, uh, you know, you get kind of used to that. But, like, I, I feel like maybe we shouldn't be. <laughs> no, he completely missed the mark for the middle class, the working class folks who are working one or two jobs who can't afford a house either, right? And, and let's be clear, like, on the housing issue, let's just stay there for a second. This Doug Ford government has missed every mark every of its own, its own metrics on building new housing in the province since 2022. Those are my, that's not my analysis. That's CMHC who said that. They've never hit their own marks to build housing. And so they themselves have been a complete failure on this. So what was he trying to do there? He was deflecting. He was deflecting and he was reaching back into time to a Mike Harris style strategy, right? Honestly, I honestly said to a friend before I came on the show, you know, Doug Ford should hang out with Galen Weston a bit more, the chair of the board of uh, Law Blahs. They could invent a new sauce, a memories of sauce, mm -hmm. Memories of Mike Harris, and it could be, you know, could taste bitter and sour, just oh like God. Mike Harris's policies did towards the poor and the vulnerable in our province of Ontario. And for those of you viewers who are watching outside of Ontario, Loblaws has this thing called Memories of Sauce. Anyhow, I didn't even know that was yeah, the yeah, case. It's a big yeah. thing. Learn Anyhow, something every day. It's recycling this playbook of mean, bitter conservatism, right? Attacking the poor, attacking people who are working two, three jobs, who are living in squalor. Listen, you know, I have family that support uh, folks in food banks and I got emails on the drive here just about how expensive it is mm -hmm. to live these days. The cost of soup in 2022, $2 a can. Now $3.50 a can. People cannot afford to live on Ontario Works. Ontario Works is that payment per month is less than $800 a month. How can you live on that afford rent, afford food, afford the yeah. necessities of life and he's blaming them that they need to get off their well, quote unquote arses. Well, that's what I found kind of strange to hear because I do think you know, in general, conservatives have been good at identifying what Kathleen is talking about. The idea that there are so many Canadians who are working but are having such a difficult time, forget about thriving, but even surviving, hence the food bank statistics and a whole bunch of stuff we've been talking about now almost for two years. So I found it actually, um, even though, you know, we're used to things coming out of Doug Ford's mouth that maybe you wouldn't anticipate, like, I, I was actually struck by it just because the question was so specific to the issue of affordable housing as well. Um, similar to Laura, I wasn't that struck by it. I think, you know, uh, Doug Ford, he has a way of communicating. I do feel like he said something along these lines previously. There's no question he digressed from the question that he was asked, but even in his response, you know, he said, obviously, if you're sick, we'll help you. Uh, and I think the core message of if you're a healthy, able body, you should have a job. I think that would resonate with a lot of Ontarians across the board. And if you actually watch that interview, uh, it was probably, what, a 25-minute Q&A? Out of all the answers that he provided, that answer got a round of applause. So whoever was in that audience, construction workers, whoever was there, did support his message. So I think at the end of the day, you know, we can say, oh, he's heartless or whatnot. I don't think that's the case. I think a lot of Ontarians just like the way he authentically communicates his views and his positions. And you can strip away all that other nonsense at the core of what he's saying, able-bodied work. There is a tremendous amount of support for that position. Yeah, I understand that sentiment, and I understand um, how you're saying, like, there's a lot. I, I get it. There's, of course, I think uh, there's a consensus that if you can work, you, you should work, and people believe that. But I also don't think that abdicates Dan 
um, his government's responsibility for the fact there is that wait list for affordable homes or that there are so many people who are struggling to afford a home. Like that's, yes, we've been going at the feds forever, but that's provincial jurisdiction too. Yeah, you know, Vashi, what I'd say is that this certainly was Doug Ford at his most folksy, right? Where he's at a podium and he sounds like everybody's conservative uncle. Like this is this is a talking a style that has worked for him for a long time. And Shakir's right. It appeals to a lot of his voters. The reality I think the premier is going to start facing, and the reason I'm a little bit more caught, caught off guard about the reaction that we're seeing to this, is it's not just about affordability anymore. There is a shift right now happening in public opinion and in macroeconomic data that's demonstrating people are getting increasingly anxious about the state of the economy and having a job. Unemployment rate is rising. It's particularly high among young Canadians. And while the premier could get away with saying things like this when we were in a time of universal employment, I think increasingly we're in a situation economic that it's going to be much more difficult to say something like this and not explain why people can't find jobs.